What's going on guys, Dr. Natty here from Myokinetics, Physical Therapy and Performance. Today we're going to talk about strengthening your hamstring and this is why it's so important. Every time you have knee injury, especially ACL or meniscus, we're talking about why the injury happens and most of the time it's because your quad is overpowering your hamstring, right? And the reason why I want to show you this model, here you can see your ACL is right there. So the ACL injury happened when there's hyperextension and rotation or twisting motion, right? The stronger your hamstring, the safer you're gonna have when it comes to knee stability, right? I always like to look at the quads as your gas muscle and the hamstring is your brake muscles, right? So you heard that phrase, all gas, no brakes. That means people are just super quad dominant and has nothing in the back to help them stop. If you wanna be athletic and you wanna be athletic for a long, long time and compete at a high level, you need to have both quads and hamstring. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. All right, so the first exercise I really love for developing the hamstring and posterior change in general is the deadlift, right? So there's two variations that I love teaching is the conventional one, which is a deadlift uh, with some hinge and knee bends. And the second one would be the RDL, which is mainly focused on your hamstring and your glutes, right? So the first thing that I wanna teach you guys is how to actually hinge, right? How to stick your hip back right here. You see how I bend my knee slightly? From there, I'm just gonna reach down nice and slow. So if you do this right, your knee should not be over the bar. You want to be behind the bar, right? And then you're going to grab that bar closer to you. And all I'm going to think about is when, when I'm deadlifting, I'm thinking about pushing into the ground. I'm pushing to stand up, right? I'm not yanking, right? So that's the difference. So with the deadlift, you get a good setup. You load your hips, you should feel your hamstring. You grab this and you slowly push into the ground. Come back up, squeeze your butt and lowering it down really nice and slow. Back up, make sure you guys breathe out. Back down. So in the beginning, when you first started out, especially when it comes to like ACL rehab, knee rehab, meniscus, we always want to go higher volume. The reason being is that you want to go hypertrophy phase, right? So that's between eight to 15 reps, you know, up to like three, three to five sets. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate a couple more reps that you guys see, and then we're going to do it in different angles as well. All right guys, so now you already did your deadlift. Now I'm gonna teach you RDL, which is Romanian deadlift. What that means is that your knee is gonna be a little bit stiffer. So you're not gonna bend your knees all the way down. You're actually gonna keep it really short. And all you're gonna focus more is the hinge, right? So you're gonna focus more on less knee bends, slight knee bends, and think about hinging more. So you see I'm almost parallel. So that way I get my hamstring a little bit more, I get my glutes more, and we're just working on pushing to the ground to get hip extension, right? So you see that? Hinging, extension. Because hip extension is extremely important in athletic movement. If you want to produce force, you want to jump, you want to land, you got to get into hip extension and hip flexion, okay? So what I like about the RDLs, everyone our patients do here is, we like to go front foot elevated, right? So you see I have a little wedge where I can bring my toes up. But if you don't have the wedge, you can put a little plate right in front of you. The reason why I like this a lot, and it's a hack, because when the front foot is elevated, I have no choice but to stick my butt back because I'm gonna fall backwards, right? So when you do this, it's gonna automatically force you to hinge back more and load the hamstring more, okay? So let's get into the same thing. So I'm gonna do like a little setup, same thing, grab the bar, drag that up, right? From here, because my toes are up, I really have to stick my butt back. And from here, I don't need to go all the way down. I just need to go to where I feel my hamstring and come back up. Because the RDL is mostly an accessory exercise, I like to go nice and slow. I'll keep the reps around eight to 12, three to four sets. And I would do after my compound lift. So I would do this after I do my regular deadlifts. So it's really focused on feeling that hamstring Drive it up, again, load the hips, extend the hips. So now we're gonna move on to doing some more challenging hamstring exercises, right? So this one is my personal favorite one because you can do this anywhere. All you would need is a slider or if you have hardwood floor at home, towel. So this one will teach you how to eccentrically lengthen your hamstring, which is extremely important. If you have tight hamstring, it's gonna stop you from being athletic, right? So you can't really 
produce that break of the force that you want to do, right? So from here, all we're going to do is get the sliders, right? The biggest thing for me with this one is that you want to tuck your lower back down, right? So you can drive your hips up. Really engage your hips, slowly drive out, keep your hips up high, and slowly pull in. Because this one is going to be a little bit challenging, I want it nice and slow, and I want good rep ranges. So you're going to go 8 to 15 here, 3 to 4 set. So notice when I go out, I keep my hips up. When I bring back in, I bring my hips up as well. So this is literally one of the challenges, the hardest hamstring exercise. If you do this correctly, you should feel like your hamstrings are burning up. So again, if you're good at this, you can go here, out slow, and then pull it back up. And again, this one's gonna be really, really hard. All right, since so you guys stay till the end of the video, I'm just gonna give you some advanced exercise that I really like. So this is single leg RDLs, right? I love the single leg RDLs because that's what we do when we go back to sport. When you go back, anything that's athletic because you're always just gonna be on one foot. So this movement teach some of the most fundamental basic things that you're gonna need to do when you go back to sport or going back to running or anything that you're gonna do. So you're just gonna grab, this is a similar setup as you would when you do your deadlift. But from here, all you're gonna do is you're gonna only hinge on one leg and then you're gonna slowly come back up, really extend your hips here. And you can see this movement pattern is what you would do when you're running and when you, when you are sprinting. I tend to go slow and I tend to give good weight that they can do in a controlled manner. So I would just go around rep range from eight to 10, four to five sets, because I want people to really learn this movement pattern here. All right, so this is one of the most well-known hamstring exercises. You guys see this on Instagram all the time, but it's actually one of my favorite ones, especially in helping people develop really good hamstring control. So it's called a glute ham races, right? So if you have one of these machines in your gym, you want to make sure that your heel is really touching the pad as you're doing this, and you really want to make sure you lock your hips, because most of the time when you see people do it on Instagram, they try to unlock their hips and then try to go down, right? So you want to do it the right way. You want to lock your hips, and from there, you're going to slowly think about driving your heels towards the end there and then slowly lengthen your knees and then pull yourself back up. All right, so here's an easier version you can get started, right? It's just gonna teach you how to load your hamstring. If this is your first time on this, I would not do the full Nordic. I would just go here, right? Make sure your heel's here. Lean forward a tad bit so you feel that hamstring engage. And all we're gonna do, we're just gonna reach forward. And from there, as you reach forward, you gotta lock your hamstring and your hips as much as you can. This one, I would go high volume. So I would do 15 to 20 reaches. And then I would come back up right? I would go three to five sets when it comes to that. So it really help you guys develop those hamstrings. So now this next progression that to help you go all the way down. So when you were starting here, you can feel your hamstring. Now this time, I'm going to teach you how to slowly lower yourself down, but then using the arm to help you, right? So you're going to start in the same position as you did with the reach, but now I'm going to slowly lowering yourself down. Use your arm to help you straighten it up and then help you push. So with this one, because you're getting some help, you can probably go eight to 12 reps, three to four set. All right guys, last one, oldie but goodies. Always good to do some open chain hamstring curls. So you can either do the one laying down or the one seated, right? So either way, it's really good to do because this can help you develop your distal hamstring, which is right attached right to your knee, right? So we're gonna need to develop those guys, right? And what I love about this is that I can do it at the end as like a burnout set, a drop off set. So that way we can actually like hammer those hamstrings and, you know, make sure you're nice and sore, right? So the biggest thing with this is what I like is I like toes up when I do this. So that means I'm gonna lengthen my, my calf, right? So if I lengthen my calf, that means most of the work is gonna be is on my hamstring. Pull up nice and slow. This one, I would go, again, high volume, 
You can go a little bit on the heavy on the weight, but make sure you control your weight up. So that way you're not clanking the weights here. I would go eight to 15, three to five sets. All right guys, so that's it for all the hamstring exercise that I love giving to my patients when they walk to the door, especially when they wanna go back to the sport or when they wanna go back to compete at a high level. This is great for anyone. If you guys really enjoy this, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.